I grew up thinking that you can't really make much money farming, but she kind of figured it out and kept kept like leaving little sheets of printouts for me to read. <laughs> and I finally got around to reading them and I was like, well, that's, that's a pretty good idea. This time of year, I'm um, working with our customers, what I call our family a lot. I'm getting everybody signed up. This is like the peak time of year when people sign up for CSAs. I know it's strange to think about, you know, um, people normally don't think about what they're gonna eat from May through October um, this time of year, but um, this is a time of year, you know, it's a CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture, when the farmers are spending out all their money um, to prepare the, the land and the farm and to, you know, get all the seeds started and everything. Um, this is when the work happens, so this is when the farmer needs that support, and so this is when our customers sign up. And they come here um, two days a week, and we, you know, we go out that morning and harvest everything and they come, they show up about four o'clock and we'll have everything that we've harvested that day out and they basically we hand them a basket that's their size basket that they paid for and they we let them pick out whatever they want and they could take however much of whatever we have as long as it fits into their basket and uh, we do that a little bit different most CSAs kind of pack yeah. everybody's baskets for them but we just let them pick out what they want because it's only us two and it's a little bit less work for us to do it that way. Plus we found that they like it because, you know. People that are happy. Yeah, they know if they don't want any tomatoes that week or if they don't want squash or if they hate okra or, or if they love green beans and they only want green beans because they want to pack some up for the winter. So we let them do that and it's basically as fresh as you can get it because, I mean, we just harvest. Some things have only been out of the ground, you know, a couple hours. And um, then we have a pickup at the Franklin Farmer's Market and we take everything there and they come there and pick it up and we sell what extra we have if we feel like it. Or if we have extra. Yeah, if we're a little low on something, we won't sell any of it so our customers can have it because, you know, they've invested in us so we feel like... They come first. Yeah, they come first. And we have, you know, several different kinds of animals. We do pastured pork. Um, and I call them my tipsy pigs. Um, they have about 50 acres to run free on. And the reason I call them our tipsy pigs is we have a friend who owns a whiskey distillery in Nashville and we get his spent mash. That's just like pure, awesome protein for the pigs and they love it. And um, so we give them that. And then of course they can root around and eat whatever they want and whatever they can find out in the pastures. And then we have about a hundred laying hens. Um, and they have the same 50 acres they run free. They all hang out with the pigs. Yeah, we produce um, a little bit of grass-fed, grass-finished beef um, that have never had any grain, so they're real high in omega-3s and really lean and have lots of good protein. Um, so we sell a little bit of that to our customers, which is extra. It's not included with the CSA, so you know if they want some ground beef or some steaks or something, they'll come out here and get it from us. And then we have eggs also. We do, you know, quite a few dozen eggs every week. And the pork, we do the same. We, um, you know, people, we have sausage. A lot of people buy sausage in the winter time. It's not much of a summer thing, but. Bear Creek Farms is down the road from us and they are, they do some of the most wonderful beef on the planet. And that's their, um, main, that's, that's all they do is beef and pork. And they have a processing, a USDA certified processing facility in Chapel Hill. And they just, they do a beautiful job with everything and they dry age it and they're really, really nice people. So we um, always take our, our beeves and our porks to them and they do it for us. And, you know, they charge us a little bit, but it's definitely a fair price. Yeah, the way we work the farm is the, the farm provides, it should provide everything for itself to, to live off of, you know, the, the cows, the, the land provides the grass for the cows that live on and they, while they're eating and, and pasturing, they're fertilizing the grass at the same time. And then when we're cutting hay off of that grass, we're feeding it to them and they're standing around and they're eating the grass from the farm, which is pro <laughs> producing the fertility to go back into the gardens, which the food that the gardens create is, you know, feeding everybody and it's also feeding the animals. Somebody and, said to me the other day, you know, you don't run that farm, that farm runs you. And that's true as a farmer. There's the, you know, there's that line where you can definitely let the farm run you and you don't have much time. But for the most part, we run the farm and we do have a, you know, happy, simple life. And we really just want to keep it that way. We're not looking to be, you know, the biggest, um, 
in in town we just want happy customers and we want a, a manageable life and she really takes a lot of time with each customer that calls and explains everything to them and answers all the questions she can lots of people like to come out here and look at it and so you we know take them around the she'll farm. she'll take them around the farm or, or we'll take them around the farm and just answer any kind of questions let them see everything that we're doing um, she's really good with the uh, customer relations and and remembering everybody's names and and just kind of keeping them happy. I, I think it's definitely helped me um, having that background um, and knowing, you know, how to reach people. We do a lot of social media too. That's helped us a lot. That's another, you know, uh, word of mouth network that's really been good for us. Um, I send out emails too. Um, we have a really good email um, database uh, that we've been building for several years. We send several thousand emails out and just keep people updated on what's happening on the farm. A lot of people in America right now, especially in our community here, are making that transition to, you know, more organic lifestyle and a real food lifestyle. And what I think is so important is just know your farmer and know where your food comes from. And then all of those buzzwords aren't going to get in your way. You're not going to be reading the backs of labels. You're not going to be trying to figure out what's in your food because you know what's in it because you know your farmer and you know how they farm. And that goes back to what Daniel was saying earlier. And I really try to take as much time with people as I can. Um, you know, uh, we're not a petting zoo or, you know, really a, like a, a tourist destination, but we are a working farm. And if people are going to spend their hard earned money to support us, I think it's important that they know how we do things and um, that you know they know where their food comes from. I think more, if more people switch to that, our country in general would be a healthier place and a happier place to be. So I, I, hopefully I, we can provide a little bit of that for some people and hopefully that'll kind of catch on and, and, and grow.